beauty of this course is the wide variety of landscape. All aboard for safety and adventure on the rigid airship Excelsior. Technically, it's a rigid airship. And for all of us normal people, we never get talked about or mentioned or tracked. Nobody cares about us because we're not top three. But our Vipa makes us realize that a lot of people care about us, and I think this is awesome. I'm, I'm feeling so bad. I don't, I don't remember ever feeling so bad in a race. I've been sleepwalking so much. I've had hallucination all the time, but I guess sometimes when you do difficult things, it gets difficult. <laughs> uh. It's Coco Donut 250 this week and I'm running Sedona 125 Ultra Marathon. I'm still a little bit banged up from Zion. So the plan today is to go very, very slow. Y'all ready for tomorrow? No. No. Thank you. That's fun. You <laughs> it's gonna be cool because we're running with the 250 runners, but only the second half. So they will be tired and we'll be running with them or walking with them. So that's very exciting. Yesterday evening, I got the opportunity to film some people, some back of the pack warrior. All right, we're the night before the race and I'm gonna go catch up the last runner coming to Whiskey Row. This race, Cocodona, is organized by Aravaipa Running. It's a great racing organization. They have an amazing race and Cocodona is one of their prime events. And what's exciting with that is that they actually have live tracking. The Dona 125 or the Cocodona 125, it's a point-to-point -point race that comes from Jerome, Arizona, goes to Sedona, that's the name, and then all the way to Flagstaff. And Sedona is probably gonna be the most scenic part of the course. And we're doing that during the day, which is awesome. And I just want to go very, very, very slow. So I might even start walking from the beginning and see if I'm able to do a 125 and, well, not be fresh afterwards, but not be too destroyed. So where are the slow people's place? <laughs> you're gonna show up, Ants. Who's, who's racing this? Who's running this like a fast race? Who's, yeah, that's who's doing it. That's what we're talking one, about. Browning's gonna be racing it. Who's gonna be hiking this one? Woohoo! Yeah, sweet! We got 10. Go for it! 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1! Alright, so then I want 25, let's go! So one of the really cool thing with this race is that it really brings you across a lot of Arizona and a lot of the very historical town. I think Jerome was a mining town and we started in probably the old mining area. And that really helps you connect a little bit 
with the past and the history here. I think that was the vision for this race is to, to acknowledge who came before us and the hardship that they endure so that we have what we have today. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you've been here for a little bit, hey, nice to see you again. Uh, I've been running 100 miles more or less every month for the past year and a half. Uh, last race was Zion a couple of weeks ago. My goal when I put these videos together is really hopefully it's entertaining. So if you find it entertaining, really appreciate it. If you leave a thumbs up, that's really helping me a lot. I really enjoy making these videos. I try to be as transparent as possible. So I'm not here to prove that I'm the fastest because I'm not or the toughest because I'm not. But I have fun out there joking around, talking with people. And I hope you can see how this is a fun sport. I want to bring you along. You know, if I'm feeling strong, I'm gonna tell you. But if I feel like crying, because I want to see my mom, I'm gonna show you that also. I'm not here to boost my ego. I'm here to bring you along on the adventure. Sometimes you have highs and sometimes you have lows. And that's what makes these crazy adventure so special, so unique, and you discover so much about yourself. Rising a little bit. Mile four, detour. <laughs> it's allergy season. Yay. <laughs> Mile eight, cruising. All right, coming in the first aid station, feeling fresh like a rose. Big part of the strategy today is to eat a lot of food and take our time. So right now, taco. miles it's hot I think it's worth thank all of the volunteers but also all of the organizer we wouldn't be able to have such great adventure without all of their hard work so thank you so much very much appreciate that you're bringing the sport accessible to people and creating such a wonderful community so thank you mile 16 gratitude at the beginning of these races, things flow so well, but you know that it's gonna come at some point. My goal today is to practice and test my discipline. And discipline is not to be confused with toughness or resilience. In this case, the discipline will be to pace myself slowly, eat a lot from the start, and try to see if I can reach a point where, instead of degrading very quickly, at some point you're more steady. It's very easy to be excited and push too hard. It's really hard to stay disciplined. I'll be honest, this segment is a little long and a little repetitive. Mile 20. More wind, please. Thank you. It's really hot, but oh, maybe you can hear it. Maybe not. Sometimes there's a little bit of wind. It feels so good. So at the aid station I took my sweet, sweet time to recompose myself, drink, eat, get ready for what is a fairly long segment. Mile 24, ice, ice, baby.
<laughs> the wind, yay! We just passed a sign that said only 100 miles to go. <laughs> We're about to enter Sedona. You can see already the rock is a little more red. I gotta admit, that is exciting. Red, green, blue. Inside the circle. Can't you see it? Right there. It's bright green. Dwayne, I think you might be colorblind. There's a fair amount of color from the flower blossoming. Almost makes up for the fact that we've been climbing for a while. Mile 28, picture time. Oh. Ooh. was a water station at mile 31 and there was not just water but also ice and a very nice lady I'm sorry I didn't catch your name but thank you so much it was so helpful I would raise my hat but my hat is filled with ice right now and now this is probably the nicest segment so we're gonna take our time and enjoy it Mile 32, less than a hundred miles to go. I don't know if it's a special year for how much rain there's been, but it's very green around here. It's very beautiful, a lot of vegetation, a lot of flowers. Oh, the wind, the wind feels good. Oh. Mile 36th, tired. Hey. Yeah. Oh, hello. Hey, hello. Just out of the Sedona Aid Station, took a very, very long stop. Felt good eating good, solid food. They kept telling us that this segment will take nine ten hour now i think they're thinking about the 250 miler but still that got into my head but we'll go and we'll get it done
I feel sorry for anyone who does this segment at night because it's absolutely gorgeous. Mile 40, worried. Look at this. The Sedona piece of this race is the best part so far, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the best part. Yeah. I just caught a glimpse of Ara Vipa's blimp. Technically, it's a rigid airship. It's so cool that Ara Vipa is organizing a race like that and they're providing top notch quality aid station, live coverage, tracking, blimp. It's just amazing. And for all of us normal people, we never get talked about or mentioned or tracked. Nobody cares about us because we're not top three. But our Vipa makes us realize that a lot of people care about us and I think this is awesome. It's a sport that will welcome you no matter your level and it will make you a stronger person, a stronger individual. Alright, we're about to cross the river, knee deep, and then it's gonna go up, 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 and then it's gonna be the night. I cheated. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I want to keep my shoes dry as much as possible. And it's not a race. Grinding with a beautiful view. Sun is slowly coming down and we're slowly making our way up. I'm tired. Bye bye Sedona. Good night. Right now everything is so peaceful. We have the sunset in the distance, it's really beautiful. The air is fresh and crisp. It's gonna be cold soon, but right now it feels good. Mile 48, good night. Fifty-two mile sleepwalking. Good job man, you got a uh, drop bag? Sometimes I just wish I could go to sleep and skip all this crap, just skip it. You know, Marcel Proust, French writer, he gets down to the end of his life. And he looks back and decides that all those years he suffered, those were the best years of his life because they made him who he was. So if you sleep, ah, oh, think of the suffering you're going to miss. They don't get better suffering than that. You know what? Fuck the Air Force Academy. If I want to fly, I'll find a way to fly. You, know, you do what you love and fuck the rest.
<laughs> Mile 56, doubt. I've been sleepwalking so much. I'm so tired. I'd feel more, but when I'm sleepwalking, I I don't really have a, enough awareness to actually film. Mile 60. Despair. It's intimidating. I'm barely halfway there. I can hardly move. I don't think I've ever felt so much despair in a race before. Mile 64, hardcore sleepwalking. I'm sleepwalking so bad right now. I'm constantly walking off the road. I'll, I'll sleep at the next aid station. I need to sleep. Let's just get there. Okay, well, now it's raining, hailing, snowing. Great. Sleep first or? Uh, food first, anything? Yeah, sleep first, I think. Okay. Well, I stayed one hour at the aid station. It was difficult at first to fall asleep, but eventually the pain kind of left and then I slept so well. Honestly, it was difficult to convince myself that I should go out there in the cold again. Mile 68, a new life. I feel so much stronger right now. I have no clue how long that's gonna last, but I can run, I'm awake. There's been quite a few of those. Mile 72, trees slowing me down. Thanks guys. It's the morning again, but it's still very, very cold. I'm, I'm feeling so bad. I don't, I don't remember ever feeling so bad in a race. I've been sleepwalking so much. I've had hallucination all the time. I've never had that before. I, I, I lose consciousness basically. And I wake up walking and I'm not on the road anymore. <laughs> like, how is that even possible? Mile 80, day two. I still have 50 miles to go also, which doesn't sound great. But I guess sometimes when you do difficult things, it gets difficult. <laughs> Mile 84, second wind. I've been steadily running the last segment at like four to five miles an hour. That's very surprising. Mile 88, so close yet so far. Been really going strong at it for a little bit now. Feels good. It's crazy how sometimes you can go so low and then re-emerge from that. And I know this is temporary and I know that at some point I'm gonna be pooped out again. But wow, the, the contrast is incredible. Mile 92, let's go. Mile 96, altitude. Uh, 100, are we there yet? So as we're crossing the 100 mile mark, I would be very happy if we were done right now. But it's pretty cool. I think this is the furthest I've ever been. And every step is a new record. Reminds me of the first ultra I did. 104, exhausted. Hey, what a surprise! 
You running with me or? That's the best surprise. She was not supposed to crow pace me because she had to work. But she's here when I'm really struggling and that feels great. I'm here. She's the best. It's so fun. Thank you for being here. We're at mile 105-ish. There's 20 miles to go and it's the roughest segment now. We're gonna go up a super steep mountain. Look at Simon go! It's been over 100 miles and he's still running. I got the fart on camera. <laughs> Simon farted. Okay, we're all by ourselves. That was such a nice surprise to have Nora there because she's working. We ran a few miles together. That really helped me feel much better at tackling the one last big challenge. We're about to climb Elden, Helpen, and then we're going back to Flagstaff and we're done! Mile 112. Only a half marathon to go. Here we go. Oh, bonus, we're crossing the 3330 mark, which is the longest I've ever run. It's very windy, I can see why at night it would be terrible here. Mile 116, last climb. Really getting to me. I'm so winded. And my joints are not in the mood for any uphill or downhill. Buddy. Oh my god! Oh, Both of you? Am I smelling funny? No, no, none of that, guys. <laughs> All right, took some time at the aid station even though I didn't need to, it was so fun. It feels good to go downhill. Whew. Mile 120, downhill. Oh my God, you guys. It's a full moon. Nice. 
124, almost there. My watch seems to be a little bit far off. Can't wait to be on the road. Last segment and see Nora. That's always a good sign. Plenty of light on you. Yeah, I'm filming you. <laughs> All right, cool. So excited. Basically, uh, Shelby and Summer combined to pace her for over 170 miles, I believe. Our most recent finisher of the Sedona Canyons 125 just crossed our view as well. I believe that was uh, Simon Gerard. Congratulations to Simon. A job well done. He's got a great YouTube channel. I'm yeah. sure we'll be able to see his uh, run up there shortly as well yeah the energy and vibe at the finish line has got to be outstanding and i'll tell you what it might just it might be silly but do you know who i am no i i can't say that i do i don't know how to put this but i'm kind of a big deal really people know me well, i'm very happy for you i'm very important uh i have many leather bound books Sedona 125 done that's the longest race I've ever done and that did not go so well in the middle but towards the end I was running pretty strong I've never felt so strong at the end of a race so that was pretty cool yes yeah, so I was hallucinating pretty bad at night for example at one point there was a photographer in the middle of the night so I took time to be like shaka bra and when I passed the photographer, I realized that that was actually just a bush. <laughs> but all night, I was like hallucinating other runners next to me and being like, oh, I'm sure I can catch up to them. Then realized that, no, actually, there's no one. I'm all alone. Uh, but yeah, it was a fantastic okay. race, especially the Sedona portion. Really worth the detour, for sure. So thanks for watching. <laughs>